David. <laughs> this is a story of a man with a very strange <laughs> fate. Hey, look. It's like I've grown wings.
I didn't see you again this time either. Little Peggy. My name is David Young, former knock with the Boston PD, and now a detective who searches the past. My likes include 100% de agave tequila, my dislikes are mainly drugs and chewing gum. Two years ago, someone killed my wife. Since then, I've been using every second of my life to solve a case. Using a certain, a very special power. My head is full of memories of my wife and the bullet that robs me of them. What happened in this place on that day? It's been broken since that day. A gift is an expression of emotion. The person who sends it wants the feelings to be understood. Sometimes, however, those feelings remain in a slightly different form. I call these forgotten treasures mementos. Little Peggy. <laughs> Everyone has their own place to work. A small desk in an office, a molten hot factory, a quiet library, the register in a supermarket, or in the middle of an intersection, in bed. On a golf course, a kitchen. For some, it's the whole town. <laughs> From the day she died, this has been my place to work. Results this time either. This case is in the clear.
I have no memories of that day. When I came to, I was already lying in the ICU. The only thing I do remember are the words that little Peggy whispered as she died. Look for D. Who is D? Those words keep spinning in my head. At the time, with no compelling evidence, the case hit a dead end. I quit the BPD. However, under the right circumstances, I now have the capability to solve even a dead-end case. I'll do everything in my power to find this D. I swear I will. And when I do... Oh, Peggy. Amanda? What am I doing? Escape now! <gasps> this is Amanda. She just suddenly started living here one day. She sometimes goes out and gets food for us. And that's something of a lifeline for me, as I don't really go outside. Just who she is, though, well, my memory holds no answers. <sighs> Yo, David, everything ship shake? As you can see, Teddy. Someone definitely got the jump on you. <laughs> Forrest Casey, a detective with the Boston Police Department, and my former partner. He still helps me out nowadays in my search for D. He's both a client and a source of information. He gets whatever I need. Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> Women are always trouble. Doesn't matter how old they get, trouble. I'm fighting with Diana again? <sighs> like you wouldn't believe. Women, men don't stand a chance. Uh, don't come and see me. Actually means get right over here, but then leave me alone just means well leave me alone How am I meant to make sense of that? Tell me David, please
never show weakness, no matter who you're fighting. Oh, give me a break. We're not talking about some investigation here. Uh, I was a fool to ask you. Man, Diana is so stupid. Once feared as the mighty grizzly, detective among detectives. Now he's more like a big teddy bear. What's the point of the place? Teddy, what's this? So, tell me, David, have you heard the news about that airplane accident, huh? Access Gate Airways Flight 117, struck by unexplained lightning. No one's talking about anything else right now. We might be looking at the real deal. I've got the good stuff for you this time. Passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? Antonio Zapatero, otherwise known as Rabbit. He's a courier who only carries real blood. This one promised to provide evidence after being brought to Boston. Evidence that may well have led to the ID of the source of real blood. But then the lightning struck, and in the confusion, he vanished. He escaped somehow? No. When I say vanished, that's pretty much what I mean. Like something out of a magic act. So, clue me in. What makes this one the real deal? The name of the boss he was going to give up? apparently starts with the letter D. This courier might have had evidence revealing the identity of D. So, interested yet? Let me ask you again. A passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? No, it's impossible. There's someone pulling the strings behind this mystery. Right on the money, David. The third party most likely used the confusion to spirit the courier away. Lots of people want the evidence he was carrying after all. From the evidence I was able to bring, this particular item is the most interesting. The owner of that badge was involved in this incident. Well? No doubt about it. This is a memento. Great. It's yours, then. Let's hope it's the last one you'll ever need.
Teddy. Thanks for all the help. Huh, no problem, David. We're partners. You may have quit the force, but that fact won't change. Hell, if you trace it all the way back, if I hadn't asked you to join up in the first place... Teddy! No, no, no. Don't give me that look, Amanda. I'm just trying to give him a reason to live. Little Peggy, time has been frozen for me since that day. <laughs> Will I see you this time? a story of a man with a very strange fate. Hey, look. It's like I've grown wings. Lavatory. On an airplane. Another successful dive. Catching memories called mementos. Allows me to dive into the past. The day little Peggy was killed, I survived. Miraculously, somehow, I survived. In exchange for losing my memory, I gained this power. has to be a sign of something. The past will surely tell me the truth. <gasps> Look for the... I can't get a voice out of my head. Who killed her? Just who is D? The only way to silence that voice is to change my fate. Mind? Witness? Or maybe?
vanishing from an airplane during a flight? That's impossible. There's got to be something I'm missing. Are you okay? David. Little Peggy? Sir, are you okay? You look like you've just seen a ghost. My apologies, Olivia. You just look so much like an old girlfriend of mine. What's that supposed to mean? Just for a second, I actually thought little Peggy had come back to life. I have to get back to work. Sure. No problem, Olivia. Just one thing, sir. You're surely aware that we carry a passenger list aboard. Huh. Memorized it, have you? We don't take kindly to stowaways, if that's what you are. A stowaway, am I? Well, Miss Olivia Jones. Maybe you're on to me. You're a United States Marshal. You're transporting a key witness, but reading a completely different file. Does that just mean you're passionate about your job? Or is there something else going on here? You, what are you doing here? Derek Buchanan, United States Marshal. The owner of the memento I used to get here, along with a name that starts with D. Two signs I can't ignore. I said I'd kill you if I saw you again, didn't I, boy? It seems we've already met somewhere. Only those with hair get to speak. I have hair. I just shave it off. I told you. Shaving it means you don't have it. Stay out of this. Antonio Rabbit Zapatero, a dealer of the drug called Real Blood. Apparently, he also has evidence that could lead to the identity of D. If that's true, it makes him the most important person on this flight. You really have a death wish, don't you? Yet you might be the one who dies. How dare you? You should get out as quickly as you can. I'll keep the fountain pen. To remember you by.
courier is gonna vanish, is he? No matter what trick he uses, I'll get to the bottom of this. Is anything the matter? You mentioned the passenger list? Oh, I'm sure it's just my mistake. You really do have it memorized? I thought I did, but I'm still new at this job. It's probably just my mistake. I'm sorry I said anything. Is it true that there's a United States Marshal aboard this flight? Why would you ask such a thing? I heard some of the other crew talking. <laughs> Let's hope she buys that. I have no idea. No idea at all? Isn't the passenger list burned into your memory? Even if I did know, I couldn't tell you. Why would you care to know, may I ask? Oh, uh, just a passing interest. Hmm. You called me a stowaway, didn't you? My apologies for that, sir. What did you mean? Nothing really. No deep meaning. Nothing at all? I must apologize if I have upset you. I didn't mean to. I'm truly very sorry. Snow on the front, cherry blossoms on the back. They change them according to the season? It isn't totally atrocious, but hardly avant-garde now, is it? I'd expect no less flying coach, of course. Would it have killed them to use a little real stitching? Honestly! And who might you... I don't ask for opinions from the uninspired. Suki, baby, what do you think? Dress all the seats white, then crown them with a single pink stag beetle? Oh, yes! Or maybe change all these to black lights, but not too dramatic. Just play Does straight. your mannequin ever reply? She's not a mannequin! She's my partner. She is? Yes, she is. I'm Duncan, and this is Suki. We're top fashion designers, the both of us. <sighs> <sighs> This guy's also a D. Some people just don't get it, no matter how many times you tell them. My bad, I'm sure. Can I ask you something? I don't need your opinion. After all, I have Suki. The sunglasses in particular are strikingly progressive, don't you think? This is... Oh, my God! The epitome of my next theme. <clears throat> the cot that was blocking the aisle has been moved. Now I can expand my search area a little wider. These look like souvenirs from the trip. Hmm. 
4,540? There's something fishy going on here. Is there a problem? The west side window. The sun's setting there, so that's the west. The west side window, the angle of the setting sun, that is the left side in regard to our direction of travel. That window right there, that window made a noise, didn't it? You heard it, right? I have to inform Dr. Johnson. Going to Washington, D.C. by plain nonsense. Absolute nonsense. She has her name written on everything she owns. She's a D2? This is so bad. This plane is going down. It's okay. There's no problem. Oh, shut your mouth. There were lightning strikes on the flight. Over. There's most definitely a problem. The window will keep on creaking. Suddenly, it will break. We'll turn like crazy. Lightning will hit us again. A direct hit. Lightning? Yes, lightning. It'll blow an engine up this time, that's for sure. And what happens then, Mr. No Problem? This plane won't be flying anymore. You agree with me now, right? This plane is going down! No. This plane didn't crash. What? Did it crash? Did it? How the fuck would you know that? Who the hell do you think Is you there a problem, oh. madam? This... this dumb shit here is fucking with me. I told him the noise the window was making is bad news. I told him... Well, madam, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Very well. I just... Please allow me it's to handle this. Unbelievable. Well, well. So Let me life. see now. Mr. Young, wasn't it? I have to admit, I didn't expect to ever see you again. I can't imagine why. For me, our first meeting is a past that hasn't happened yet. You are quite the stubborn mule. The type who won't stay dead even if he gets killed, maybe. Oh, I wonder. If you're going to cause trouble, I may have to eject you from the game. <laughs> trouble? Me? Your watch was about to fall off. It looks expensive, so I didn't think you'd want to lose it. I'm just a polite, helpful passenger. Look, ref, if you're gonna bench anyone, bench her. And I heard it, and if you don't listen to me, I don't know what <clears throat> I'll do. Just listen! Now I've got three people with names that start with D. Deborah Anderson, Duncan, and Derek Buchanan. To be honest, I still don't know if any one of them is who I'm after. But there's a bag load of room for suspicion. Isn't that right, Peggy? This is business class. I cannot let you through. What if I push the point? You will find that I push back. The way in the business class has quite the guard dog. Moving a guard dog requires some bait. A disturbance should work.
There's nothing here. Snow and cherry blossoms. A seasonal theme, I'm guessing? Nothing looks out of place. Luggage is hidden in. That's what's making the window squeak. Oh. oh my. You were a nice gentleman. Madam, you think I I'm just some complainer? Some of the... lawsuit seeker? Do you? This is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable! Show me your name tag. Show it to me! Employee number D-3582. I've burnt it into my forebrain. Once I'm home, yes, I am going to sue you. I've never been so mad in my life. what I preach. As you I wish. Mm. However, perhaps if we change your... Is there any way fail. I can talk to your manager? I'm sure the sound I've of windows would not annoy you in, say, and every... business class. Hmm? The seats I've... are very fluffy, too. Business? That's a glass... It is, madam. I could show you to your seat. One where I can't hear the windows. No <laughs> nasty window noises in business. <laughs> well, I... If you'll just allow me to explain the procedure for your upgrade. I suppose that could be okay. <laughs> you never... Then I saw that big man. The scar on my forehead started to throb. It's never happened before. What's going on here?
what are you doing here? <laughs> this big fella, I've met him before somewhere, but I can't remember where. My scar is desperately trying to tell me that he knows something. this one out of the park. How 
about? You give up. You've had enough, right? Oh, shit, fuck! Oh, fuck! 99, yummy. Olivia? He vanished? What are you doing that for? You there. Perfect timing. I can't take it anymore. Take what? What is Deborah talking about? That lightning strike electrified the floor and handrails. So I'm doing my best not to touch them. <laughs> but I can't take it anymore. My arms, legs, neck, back, everything is screaming in pain. I need to try and calm it down. striking an airplane. Crazy, huh? Do you think this plane is okay? First, squeaking windows, and now seats and floors are electrified? I'm almost impressed by your capacity to worry about the mundane. Hold it! What was that about the windows? They were squeaking, right? Squeaking! The windows! You're saying the windows on this bucket squeak? 
You're pulling my leg. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. That lightning strike would have come in through the cracked window. We'd have smashed into the sea, its surface harder than concrete. It's like Dr. Johnson always says. Fall from an airplane and you'll die. So just keep your fear-mongering to yourself. There certainly doesn't seem to be any counting in her notes. What's going on here, then? You also take notes on suspicious people, right? That's right. There's you, of course, and I've got notes on that guy with the mannequin. Oh, I've got his number. He's one of them object sexuals. I'll have to take your word for that. It's a term applied to individuals who fall in love with inanimate objects. Come on, you've heard of it. A type of paraphilia. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, love has no boundaries. What about the guy with the scar on his forehead? Stony face, in business class? Oh yes, workaholic, textbook. He's got it bad too. He's either using his work to run away from something, or work itself is his reason for living. Reason for living. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, it doesn't matter what it is, just find a reason to live. There's nothing here. front is a cherry blossom pad, and snow is on the back. When did that change over? It's a domestic flight, no large bags. There's nothing here. The cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean? Cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean?
When did you move to this seat? So too does place. Time is of the essence. You of all people should understand. Cutlery has to be stainless. Don't you agree? That lightning strike. How did you know about it? Before it even happened. Don't tell me you can control lightning strikes. Your ability to look is not bad. But you need to be able to observe a little more carefully. engine isn't damaged. You have good observational skills. You already know the answer. Am I correct? Do you know what happened to the courier? It might be said that I do, and it might be said that I don't. If time changes, so too does place. Time is of the essence. Either way, Mr. Young, you cannot ask me to do your job for you. What about that female member of the cabin crew? You mean Olivia Jones? You saw her. Did she remind you of little Peggy? <gasps> what 
What's going on here? What have you done to me? Can you finally see them? These are things with a special meaning for you. What are you talking about? Catch them if you can. You may discover something about her. Clover represent your memories of her. Don't let them slip away. What are you talking about? Mr. Young, I've placed a memory left by her in your house. That Something in my house, a memory with her. Clover. Little Peggy? Could it be? Hmm. It's like I'm not even here. Like I'm not even here. Oh dear. Control will be an issue if I can't find it. Huh. Sir, can I help you with anything? Where's Olivia? Excuse me, sir. Exactly which Miss Olivia are you searching for? Olivia Jones. She's a member of the crew, just like you are. I'm very sorry, sir, but she isn't aboard this flight. Come on. Did that lightning strike you too? 
She was right here a moment ago. In any case, you need to contact Logan Airport immediately. Tell them we have an emergency up here. Also, get the BPD to send some cops to the airport. Detective Forrest Kazin in particular. Give him my name and you'll have no problems. Well, excuse me, sir. Are you hoping to use this confusion for something nefarious? If so, I'll have to stop you. Ugh, damn Next it. time, I'll break more than you watch. My most humble apologies, Mr. David Young. This incident has us all a little riled up, I'm sure. Huh? I'll make the call about the suspicious person immediately. To our destination, Ronald Reagan International Airport. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to work. What a beautiful sunset. It reminds me of the day I proposed. <laughs> Little Peggy. I'll find who killed you. I will. <laughs> 